Welcome to another weekly installment of Turnpike Sports. I am Dave Weishuttle, and as always, joined by my producer and co-host, Doug Weishuttle. Doug, hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Before we hop on the Turnpike, I'm going to say this right off the bat. I am tired of hearing about the Patriots. Oh, my God. Okay, because Tom Brady didn't say if he's going to play or not. Everyone's assuming he's not going to play. This is this is the weirdest non-story, I think, in the world. But, uh, hey, you know what? It's draft week, so stories are flying all around. But you know what? It's over and over again. It's almost like a, hey, look at me, look at me. We're not interesting anymore. Here's, well, you know, you have Brady, you have Gronkowski, you have everything started with Butler in the Super Bowl, that Darlington piece on ESPN. Everybody is just. It's, it's ridiculous. It, 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 look, Ed, Patriots are going to take a quarterback in this draft. There's, It's just the responsible football move to do. And if anything, think what you want about the Patriots. They're a responsible football team, and they prepare for any and all circumstances. I just so. like the fact that somehow they had to get rid of Gar- Garoppolo. And then all of a sudden, Brady is Which, doing by, this by the way, I- extremely stupid move. He was there. They had it all apparent, set up. They had it all apparent. set up to go ahead without Brady. And uh, and by the way, he's uh, has Garoppolo lost a game yet in the uh, he, He's NFL? not lost a game, okay. but he's got a monster contract. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, hey, that's, that's the start of the show. We didn't even get on the turnpike yet. So, uh, hey, let's hit the exits. Exit one. Arena Football League has a new partner. Talking about Kings. football light, huh? <laughs> I, I don't even know if we can call it football light. I, I I kind of enjoy it, but you know, it's you know, it's not my first viewing choice. It's it's actually nice to see the Arena Football League doing something that's bringing it into the news again because it's now down to a four team league. It's thirty one years old. You have DraftKings coming in to partner with them for exclusive fantasy. Uh, be their exclusive fantasy partner. Wait, I, I want to hit on two things. The two things that really surprised me about the Arena Football League. Number one, they only have four teams. Yes. Four. Yes. <laughs> okay. Not 14, not, you know, 34. Four teams. Unbelievable. I don't know how they exist like that. And secondly, 31 years old. Wow, that's impressive. That was the most surprising thing Good about the story. They were still around after 31 wow. years. Uh, you know, I remember when they first started out, you had uh, the Iowa Barnstormers. With, yeah, that, with, uh, uh, Kurt, Kurt Warner. Warner. Yep. Kurt Warner. I remember and, that. And it just... Uh, are, they, are they still one of the four teams? No. No? Okay. Oh, they, by the way, the uh, the champion of the Arena Football League are the uh, Philadelphia Soul. That's true. That's yeah, true. Well, but I remember when they first started out, they had a full league, multiple teams. Then they went to the AFL and the AFL 2. Oh, I don't. They had another league, and That's now it's down to me. four teams. <laughs> but you know, uh, DraftKings is going to be their fantasy partner. They're going to stream the games on DraftKings. So that that's actually a really nice thing to see with the AFL. I got to tell you, DraftKings are making some big moves this year. They they moved to an office in New Jersey with the hopes of sports betting. And by the way, I think this move also smacks of sports betting uh, futures. Uh, well, this is the second. T- uh, uh, deal of this type that they've done. They did one last year with the uh, Euro League Basketball League, okay. and it's actually working out for them. So they're actually mirroring what they had with this other league with Arena Football. Now, I don't know if this could actually bring Arena Football back yeah. into the forefront, but it'll be interesting to see exactly what But happens. the Arena Football League is making some moves, too. That's right. They partner with Facebook. I guess they're going to be streaming games on Facebook, too. Okay. Uh, Sport Radar, okay. which is going to be their stack keeper for the fantasy okay and i believe they have another deal with um well the one i'm hitting it is the vegas sports and inner inf- information network vsin vegas sports information no, network. vegas stats and information vegas stats and information i don't i'm not even sure what it is and, and by the way i listened to their uh, show on uh, uh sirius xm aren't they having pregame shows and they're going to be doing in-game live betting content that's my point right there it, it just they're getting ready for sports betting. This is getting ready for. And by the way, it's probably the only thing that's going to save Arena Football League. And and, and actually, I can, I can understand VSIN getting involved to do the in-game sports betting thing because when the NFL takes over with the sports betting, you know, you're dealing with four teams. This is like minor league type of stuff to go to 32 teams. Mm-hmm. So they may have something already set up and in the works for the NFL when stuff happens. Oh, and boy, does this lead into our next exit. Exit two. You knew this was coming with all the sports betting yep. talk. Players unions want a seat at the table when it comes to the sports betting laws. Big money grab. 
money grab alert. And, and they and they couched it in terms of they wanted to protect the integrity of the games and also the public, publicity rights of their players. Now you know what that means: publicity rights of the players. They want to get paid for they want to get sports paid to betting be... sites using their names and Absolutely. likenesses. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So. You know, they had to have – They had, you couldn't get these things passed without hearing from these guys. Yeah, well, it all started with about the NFL. They wanted an integrity fee, which is a portion of every bet placed. Win or lose, they get a portion. What is it, 1% of every bet placed? That's, that's what they're proposing, but, you know, it, the integrity fee is not an unheard of thing. No, no. Australia and France have them, but for 0.25%. Which makes sense. Because one thing that everyone is coming with their hands out, the one thing they have to realize, if the casinos do not make a profit, and if it's not profitable for that business, guess what? They're not going to do it. And there's not going to be any sports betting. So there's no money for any of you guys. So you know what? If they keep their head about them and come at this at a rational, reasonable way, maybe something can be done. But I don't think they're going to pay an integrity fee to the league and to the players union, which is crazy. Well, I think if they play it right, that one percent integrity fee could cover both. They split the one percent integrity fee, so it looks like more like a point five percent. Oh, you mean fee. the union and the league if come they, and work together? That's yeah, not going to happen. When, when is that going to happen? Now imagine, imagine the sports betting stuff when it comes down to doing the CBAs for the for the new leagues for all the for the new CBAs for all the leagues. You know, this is going to be part of that. And you know the people, the former players, are going to want a chunk of this, too. It, it's a mess. It's an absolute mess right now. Exit three. I wanted to do this one because this is still one of the best stories in hockey. I've Absolutely. seen it so, so long. The Golden Knights were the first team in NHL history to sweep a playoff series in their inaugural season. I, I've never seen a team do something like this first year out of the gate. They weren't expecting any of this. They're having big crowds. And the one thing I I came across in doing prep work for all this stuff, they have what's called the Knight's Vow, which I think is a stroke of marketing genius for these guys. Yeah, I like this. It's season ticket holders. They, they have an opportunity to opt in on this. They don't have to do it, but they, if they want to, lower ticket prices, but they also agree not to resell the tickets. So it's a home crowd. Which is great. I think it's, you know, for a first-year team, I think it's important to have the crowd behind them. And, uh, I, you know, you watch these other NHL playoff series. I'm watching Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. They're in the same state. So, you know, they have fans from both sides, and they're cross-pollinating morons in, the, in these stadiums. And it's just an idiotic scene. They're not even great games, by the way. I well, hope they well, have good games. Let me game. ask you this. The, the Knights do basically everything else all the other teams do. They had a fanfare and everything else good. for the, for the fans going there on the in the Vegas uh, Commons there where they have the stadium and all that stuff. But is something like this Knights Val a good marketing thing for every team, or is it just going to work for the Vegas team? I, I think this Vegas team is something special. I think they can get away with it because it's their first year. I think... You know, having home support is so important, and I think it's I think it's important for other teams coming to Vegas. When you see this support, and I think when, hey, the Raiders are, I think, going to take some cues from the uh, Knights, and I think I, they're going to do well in Vegas. I, I don't think the Raiders need to take cues from the Knights because they have a traveling fan base anyway. No. I think people are going to be surprised at how many Raiders fans travel to Vegas to watch the games. Well, they're also going to be part of the scenery, which means, hey, I'm from New York. I'm here visiting. Hey, let's go see a Raiders game because they're not going to be fans of the Raiders. They're just going to go and say, you know what? I went to a Raiders game. I saw the Raiders in Vegas. How cool was that? I mean, they're not they don't have a rooting interest in, you know, the Raiders. It's just a part of the, you know, scenery. How soon before an NFL team tries something like this? I, th I think the Raiders will. The Raiders should. I, I don't know if it would work for an NFL team. Maybe maybe a, the basketball team. You know, the WNBA may try that with the Vegas Aces. Well, and uh, well, let me tell Which, you. Which, by the way, coolest name. Oh, yeah, absolutely. They, I think they, it's great. they embraced Vegas. They did the Aces thing. Somebody else is going to have to do something with a casino or gambling. Yeah, I know. Someone has. They have a gambling theme. Okay, whatever. And they're against gambling. Exit four. Staying with Vegas. 
The NFL draft is coming up in April 26th in Arlington, Texas. Vegas is now ready for it. They have Last year, they started off doing betting on the NFL draft. Uh, this year, they've expanded it. They now have 32 types of prop bets. And it's all prop bets, right? Well, I, this was because it's cla- not sporting classified event. as a prop bet because it's there's a no outcome bet. of a game. Right. right? No, no game is part of this. So they have 32 prop bets this year for the NFL draft. They had 17 last year. So they've expanded it. Wow. They're, they're wow. expecting a lot more business. Uh, the new things they're going to be doing, people are going to be able to bet on a player's draft position, not only in terms of the overall draft or where they where they were drafted, but against other players of the same position. Now, do they set odds for these things, or is they they, or, they have they have odds, and it's your wager is based upon the odds. It's just like betting on anything else there. Wow. And also, you know, as always, they, they did last year. I believe I, they, they did, did now, last do year. Do they do, like, colleges, say, Oklahoma gets the number one overall draft, something like that? Is that They have the of? number of schools. Okay. They, you get over under on the number of schools for each of an individual school. They have what team gets drafted. So, what, wait, wait, the over under of players from an individual school that yeah. will. Say, like, Ohio State. Okay. You know, there's going to be an over under of, say, 10, 10 players. Yeah. Yeah. So they're going to be doing that. I found it in, more interesting to hear the other types of prop bets they have over at Nevada. Uh, for baseball, they have Rookie of the Year, MVP, Cy Young, and Manager of the Year. Okay. NBA, they've got the Draft, Rookie of the Year, MVP, and the Finals MVP. NHL is only the Con Smythe. Okay. And then they have other sports. And the, the last one I'm going to list here is I didn't even know that you could bet on these. You could do the World Series of Poker. Which is interesting. You're gambling on people who are gambling themselves. That's correct. <laughs> okay, so there. there League of Legends, which is the esports. Okay. I, well, I can see that. I know they're betting on esports. But this one, I still did not know they did, if at all, air races. I don't even know what that is. Two the, planes racing along a uh, like a uh, track. Wow, really? They have a track? Well, it's it's in the sky, yes. Wow. They, okay. they have they have to go around a certain uh, thing, and they race against I've never each other. witnessed an air race. It's well, a, I, I guess if you're... In in the desert, I guess you got lots of room for that, right? Uh, you're not going to do it over cities. Right? D- you know what? It didn't say whether it had to be in Nevada. Wow. Okay. Wow. No oh, air races. Hey, if anyone knows about air races, uh, get in touch with us. Doug, how, how do they get in touch with us? Well, that was a good segue oh, there. Oh, I love that. It was just I just smooth that. It right was now. beautiful. Thing of beauty. Uh, you can call or text the show at 609-512-6510. That's 609-512-6510. That's our a caller or text line. Hit us up on Facebook or Twitter at Turnpike Sports for each of those. And email us at info at turnpikesportsradio.com. Don't forget to visit our friends over at the International Bikini Team for uh, to order one of your calendars. Uh, email them at info at internationalbikiniteam.org for more information. Thank you, Michelle. Great people to work with over there. And stick around. We're going to come back with the Turnpike Sports Police Blotter, sponsored by another great sponsor of ours, Bean Genius. Stick around. We'll be right back with more Turnpike Sports. We'll get right back to the show, but I want to take a minute to talk to you about Bean Genius. How would you like your coffee delivered right to your door every month, maybe two times a month? Well, now that can happen with Bean Genius. Bean Genius sells freshly roasted coffee from some of the best independent coffee roasters in the country at BeanGenius.com. And Bean Genius actually learns their customers' individual taste preferences, then suggests future coffee blends for them. Well, how do they do that? Well, this is the cool thing about Bean Genius. Over at BeanGenius.com, they use an algorithm which learns the coffee flavors you like and then pairs up what you like with the coffee that they have in stock. And it's all based upon you. Every time you order, the system learns. The system learns your preferences as you go along and order more and more coffee. And now, all our listeners at Turnpike Sports can get a special offer. You head on over to BeanGenius.com slash subscription, and you'll be able to get 10% off your purchase when you use our promo code PIKE, P-I-K-E, at checkout. That's 10% off at BeanGenius.com slash subscription with promo code PIKE, P-I-K-E. BeanGenius.com, the smart specialty coffee subscription service. 
Free stuff is awesome, but free stuff that will spice up your bedroom is even better. Just go to adamandeve.com and select almost any one item for 50% off, and then we'll load on the free stuff. Just enter this very exclusive code, BABE16, at checkout, and you'll get 10 tantalizing free gifts, including a sexy item for him, a special toy for her, Ooh. and a third item you'll both enjoy. Ooh. And for your viewing pleasure, six free spicy movies on DVD. Plus, free shipping. Always sent in discreet packaging. So go to adamandeve.com now. Get 50% off plus 10 free gifts when you enter the exclusive offer code BABE16. Again, that's BABE16. Because without it, no No free free stuff. stuff. That's BABE16 at adamandeve.com. You've been hearing me talk about my pillow and the benefits of using it to get a good night's sleep, alleviate your sore neck and back, and the special deal you can get for my pillow through the show. Well, not only can you pick up the special deal for four my pillows when you use promo code CARDS, but now you can get $100 off your purchase of the my pillow mattress. Yeah, that's right, the my pillow mattress. The my pillow mattress comes with a 10 year warranty and a 120 day money back guarantee. The MyPillow mattress is made up of three unique layers, providing you the comfort and support to fall asleep and stay asleep all night. It even has the luxurious Dream Soft cover, which is stain-resistant and stays cool all night. Just head on over to MyPillow.com, click on the MyPillow mattress link, and enter promo code CARDS at checkout to get $100 off your order. Or call 1-800-319-7913 to order by phone. That's MyPillow.com, or call 1-800-319-7913 and use promo code CARDS. Better sleep starts with MyPillow. Welcome back to Turnpike Sports. I'm Dave Weishattle. Now it's time for my favorite part of the show. That's right, the world-famous Turnpike Sports police blotter. As always, the Turnpike Sports Police Blotter is brought to you by Bean Genius. Over 2,000 specialty blends of coffee available at your fingertips at BeanGenius.com. Have some of the best coffee in the country delivered right to your door each month when you subscribe to Bean Genius. And now get 10% off your subscription when you sign up at BeanGenius.com using our promo code PIKE at checkout. That's P-I-K-E at checkout. Bean Genius, the smart specialty coffee subscription service. And this week we're going to start off with the world champion, Philadelphia Eagles. What I know about this, this is so stupid and silly, and it was one of the best stories in the offseason, but now it turned to crap. I Go ha- ahead, Doug. I, no, have, I have to admit, Unbelievable. I've never seen a guy get kicked off a team even before hitting the field. Oh, my God. Your defensive back, Daryl Worley. Uh, newly acquired defensive back. For Torrey Smith who was a fan favorite in the one year he was there. Yep, absolutely. People loved him, and he did a great job, too, by the way. They traded him away to get Worley back from the Carolina Panthers. Uh, He was arrested near the team facility. He was passed out in a vehicle blocking the highway. (laughs) No reason why was given why so far of why he was unconscious, but when the police were summoned and they roused him from his dreamful sleep, I guess, <laughs> yeah, right. he, he got combative and they had to tase him. Oh, so right off the bat, you have a tase. Oh, my God. And searching the vehicle. Oh, wait, the cherry on top of this uh, crap Sunday. What, what is it? See, they found a gun. Oh, of course they found a gun. Now, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a little... Uh, it's a little unclear where they found this, whether they found it in the vehicle or on him, because one of the charges, and they've got six charges against him. Wow, six. Okay. I'm going to read it off here because this is driving under the influence, carrying firearms without a license, carrying firearms in public, possessing an instrument of crime with intent, resisting arrest, and disorderly conduct for engaging in fighting. Unbelievable. I, I say this was the one of the good stories off season 
after in the off season because this guy is a local guy in Philadelphia. I mean, the Philadelphia Eagles was his hometown team, and he came back and he went to high school around that area. And but he didn't play college, though, right? He didn't play college there. No, I mean that in Philly. He's not no, a no. hometown Phil, uh, college well, guy. He's from there. He went to high school in the Philadelphia area. But uh, no, he, that was the big story in the off season. Oh, he's coming back home and he's going to play for his hometown team and he does this. Well, you know, it's a big story for him now because the team's not involved. They released him. He's off the team now. This is not his first incident either. Okay. He's got a 2014 no contest plea to misdemeanor assault from a nightclub altercation. Okay. With another with a woman. Oh, right. He was, says he's defending his girlfriend, but you know that's all alleged. So we, we'll step away from that one. Next up, staying in the NFL, this is a moron. Green Bay Packers wide receiver Trevor Davis. Okay, what happened to him? He was arrested at LAX. Uh oh. He was, oh wait a minute. He, oh wait, I just heard LAX, and it, was this the guy? Okay, I, I I'm sorry I interrupted you that's because okay. this is that's awesome. Okay. This is an awesome. Story. You know what? This is the case. This is a case. Before I get to it, this is a case of something sounding so good in your head before you say it out loud. Oh my god! He was boarding the, a plane uh, for Hawaiian Airlines. He was going to Hawaii with the girl, and as they were checking his luggage, they were going through the security questions. When uh, he turned to the girl with them and said, "Honey, did you?" Uh, uh, did you remember to pack the explosives? Now, this girl could have stopped it right there, but she said, no, she didn't forget. <laughs> Was she wearing a T-shirt, I'm with stupid? <laughs> you know, they could have done them both ways, wow. too. So. Wow. So he, he, was, he was arrested immediately, even though he was saying he was joking around. He was arrested immediately, booked, took a mugshot, and then released. Well, I'm glad these two morons found each other. Wow, how stupid can the, you the be? One thing I Both of them. The Both thing, of them. The one thing I have I hope they found, get married and have stupid children. I, I just haven't been able to find out whether or not the Packers are uh, releasing them <laughs> or keeping them. But you know what? It's I just can't believe someone was in this day and age to do something that stupid. They actually had that one other guy. Um, he was the former 49er and Raider, uh, Alden Smith. Okay. He did oh, that yeah. too. He yeah. called in a bomb, fake bomb thing, but he actually used a phone from a payphone outside the dumb uh, airport. That's how idiotic that that guy was. Oh boy! Staying with the NFL, this one's a former NFL defensive boy, back. Big week for the NFL and uh, rest. What's I actually remember here? watching this guy play, Marlon McCree. Okay, played with the Jaguars in two thousand one, Texans, Panthers, Chargers, and Broncos. Okay. 41-year-old guy. He is charged with simple assault, aggravated battery with a deadly weapon, the deadly weapon being his car. He ended up doing a little automobile chase trying to track down his wife, who was trying to hide from him, in the parking lots of a mall, uh, Best Buy, and he ended up ramming her car twice during this little high-speed chase through a parking lot. Wow, through a mall? Well, not in the mall. But well, no, no. I mean, through a mall. Th- this is not the blue, this is yeah. not the Blues Brothers. <laughs> yeah, okay. But no, they. Uh, he was he was trying to uh, track down his wife who was trying to hide from him. Uh, he's lucky he didn't hurt someone else in a parking lot of a mall. Believe God, me, that's the, like the, this this was an unbelievable thing. When I was when I was reading this, I couldn't believe an actual chase like this would have happened. Now, who's dumber, the bomb threat guy or this guy? I'm, I'm trying to figure out. Uh, I think it's a toss-up, but I still will go with the bomb threat guy. Last but not least, we have Bowling Green State University wide receiver Matthew Wilcox was arrested, charged with operating a vehicle while impaired, operating a vehicle without reasonable control, failure to wear a seatbelt, and obstructing official business. What the hell did he do? He drove his vehicle drunk and hit a tree. Wow, boy. He And, you know, it's one of those things What's where... What's interfering with official business? Uh, I think it was a construction site or something. I don't know. They, they they were very unclear about what this was. But this kid has, you know, this, this kid just does stupid things all over. Uh, he, a couple of years ago, he was caught on video at a spring break, spring break fight with another player. Well... So he, he's had his little you know, sp- uh, incidents and everything spring else. break. You can almost... You know, look past that. But for driving drunk into a tree, wow. Well, You know, it's interesting. They got him, too, for the seatbelt thing. I've never seen. The only reason I this caught my eye, the charge, it was listed as an OVI. What's an OVI? Operating vehicle, vehicle under oh. the influence. All right. Okay. I, I, never, I never saw an OVI before. Oh, well. 
Where was this at? What state was this? Is Bowling Green? Yeah, Bowling Green. Okay. And and you didn't have to worry about getting kicked off the team because he was already kicked off the team oh, before okay. this. So well, that saves him a lot of trouble. Exactly, exactly. So that's the blotter for this week. Well, uh, we're done talking about stupid athletes, and uh, you know, stupidity doesn't stop with the athletes themselves. Doug actually found some stupid rules that are still in effect in sports today. So, uh, Doug, wh- where did hell did you find this stuff at? I uh, found it uh, scanning the Internet. Some of these things were just really crazy stuff. So uh, I was uh, kind of shocked at some of these things. Everyone knows about the one-point uh, safety in football where somebody misses a field goal, they, the guy uh, uh, t- kick, takes the ball and runs it the other way and scores. Okay, that's one point. That's a one point. Here, Here's something I, I never even thought they would have a rule for, and this goes to Polo. Polo. Well, I don't know anything about Polo. Well, I didn't know this. Polo rule 28C. No left-handed Polo players. Wow. That's discrimination, by the way. It, but if, if you think about <laughs> you it know, and, and you Speaking re- as an attorney, that's discrimination. If you're a left-handed Polo player, I think you have a case. If, if you think about it, it makes perfect sense. You have a right-handed Polo player going up against a left-handed, and they're charging each other. You got to oh, joust. Is it safety reason? It's a safety reason. Okay. But the left-handed Polo players that were uh, playing before the rule was enacted in 1974 are still allowed to play. They're grandfathered in, huh? Grandfathered in. Okay. Major League Baseball has rule 7.05, catching a ball with your hat. You know, I honestly thought any way you catch it is fine. Why Why? Why there a problem with a hat? If a player catches a ball with a hat. Now, these are still in they're use, still right? In they're, they're, they're still in effect. So yep. what happens if he catches it with his hat? The batter is awarded three bases. Wow. Are you kidding me? Ba- basically, it's a triple. That's ridiculous. Yep. Wow, that's crazy. Yep. Do you have a reason why they enacted something like that? This it's, that must have been one of those time, things that must have been old time baseball kind of stuff. I, you know what? It, it I think it has some to do again with player safety, maybe, or just you know showing up the opponents that sort of thing. I don't know. It's an etiquette. I mean, did they? What year? This must have been. This the, is the early, early yeah, years early, of yeah. it. No, this the, has been on the books. This for is years. the uh, shoeless Joe Jackson kind of yeah. rule. What the hell is that? Now, I honestly thought you could. Moving to the next rule in Major League Baseball. Major League Baseball Rule 8.01, subparagraph F, at-bat ambidextrousness. Applies to pitchers. Say that one more time. At-bat ambidextrousness. Meaning what? I mean, you can't start right hand and the next pitch go left? Right. Okay. You have to stay with that. I always thought about that. By the way, that's that's an interesting rule to realize. I mean, if you start batting right, you got to finish batting right. Well, if for pitchers, they have to clearly indicate with which arm they're throwing. Okay. Now, they can't switch arms in the middle of an at-bat unless they're injured. Oh, wait. We're talking about – I thought you meant the batters no, the could pitchers, switch. the pitchers. Well, who the hell – I don't know any pitcher who can switch their arm. But I like this. If hey, the, but can batters switch? Doesn't say Do anything pitchers? silent about that. Oh, I thought you were talking about batters. No, talking no. About this, pitchers. Is, this is pitchers. Oh, wow. If an injury does happen to the pitcher and he has to switch arms, yeah. he's allowed to do that without warming up. And he can't go back to the other arm at all during the game. It, let me tell you something. If a pitcher can do that, he should be awarded the MVP at that moment. I've never seen a pitcher in any level of baseball switch hands and pitch. It's amazing that it's act- – I can't believe they need a rule for that. They have one. Wow. Moving on back to the NFL. Rule 11-4-3, the fair catch kick. I've never even seen this. I have never even heard of this. I don't think anybody would even attempt to do this, but it's on the books. If a punt returner calls for a fair catch, the receiving team has the option of attempting an undefended field goal from the spot where the ball was caught. Interesting. That's very interesting. I don't know who can kick a 70-yard field goal late in the game like that. Well, you know, someone shanks it. You know, someone shanks it on their uh, – they're kicking from their goal line and they shank it and they – Someone catches it. Yeah, what the hell? I didn't know that. No defenders have to they they have to stand ten yards away, and no tees. Wow. Okay. It has to be it has to be held for the kicker. Okay, on the spot where he caught, or on the yard line where he caught. 
on the yard line where he caught it. Okay. Uh, they, it, it's been 40 years since a successful conversion under this rule. Okay. And the By the way, that's not long ago. That's 1970s. The 49ers attempted a 71-yard kick during the Harbaugh era. Okay. They, they, they tried this rule. You know what? It failed. If a coach knows that, he's showing off. That's that's what that is. That's a show off rule. Well, that's a hey. If you're dealing with a Harbaugh, that's like a Belichick it, thing. Look, look, he would no, do. No. Belichick would do that. He'd do that squib kick that from the rugby player. That kind of crap. <laughs> oh, you want to talk about that? That's that's in the rules. That is, yeah. Well, kind of figures. That's what I'm talking about. I didn't know. I after I read this, the drop kick. Yeah. You have to let it bounce first, when, and then kick it off the bounce. Oh wow! That's I the rule. Know. That's why it was impressive that Flutie did it. Oh, okay. That's the drop kick rule. You have to well, drop I'm it. I'm thinking of that Belichick bounce. one where he had the rugby guy do it. I guess that was a, a kickoff. Yeah, it was a kickoff. Okay, so, yeah, Flutie was the last one who did it. He's the one who did it, yep. Okay. And, I, like I said, I never knew you had to bounce it first and then kick it. Wow, that's that's tough to that, do. That was impressive doing that. Uh, I'll just do the last one. This is a common sense one. The blood rule from the NHL. If a uh, high stick results in injury, refs can assess a double minor on the person inflicting the injury, and then it has to be causing blood. If they see blood, that's when this rule gets into effect. It's the blood rule. Wow. I never knew there was something called the blood rule. So those are some of the weird rules out there. They're on the books. Uh, that's it for this. That'll uh, do it for us. Uh, remember uh, International Bikini Team? Email at uh, email them at info international bikini team dot org for uh, ordering information on your calendar. Don't forget to uh, visit our sponsor, Bean Genius, beangenius dot com slash subscription. You get ten percent off your subscription using our promo code Pike P I K E. Oh, and enjoy the NHL playoffs, the NBA playoffs, and uh, enjoy the draft. And if you're Vegas, hey, throw some money on uh, Oklahoma players or Ohio State players who you think will win you some money. Or, or Sam Darnold going number one or two. Yeah. What the hell? And I mean in the draft, not yeah. to the bathroom. <laughs> right. Well, that'll do for us. Have a great week, everyone. We'll see you next time on the Turnpike.